Okay, so for this video we're looking at clipping masks, and I find them to be a lot of fun. I do use them quite frequently, and you might too. Um, so first things first, you'll need a photograph, or you can also use different graphics. I'll go ahead and make another one over here so we can test that out. Alright, so <clears throat> a clipping mask basically places, just like in Photoshop, you can place an image or graphic within another shape or text and um, they just work slightly different from each other but the outcome is the same. So I'm going to make a couple copies of this photograph just because I'll end up needing them. So just duplicate that file and they're just sitting underneath each other for now. So first things first, um, in Illustrator you need your image to be placed on top of your photograph. So if, if in your layers the image was sitting above, you'd have to fix that and put it underneath. But for now, I'm just going to take this circle, I'm going to place it over. And sometimes it's a little bit hard to see, right? Cause, so you might need to change that to null and then go ahead and change it appropriately. If your photograph is too large or too small, you can certainly shrink it. Um, you can't enlarge it you need to make sure it's the right, um, that you aren't too using a low res image or getting something um, in terms of the resolution that it can't actually handle. So we've got an image here and a shape and what you do is you select both the photograph and the shape and you uh, hold the shift key down and select both so you can see here that these are selected and then you can uh, go to object and go to clipping mask and then make and my bad forgot to turn these off then these ones it you know, just pops your image right in here and oftentimes it's a really you know it changes a design quite heavily if you can um, place a photograph into a shape or text and um, of course then that leads into the fact that you can also add this to text so when you're dealing with text, you would want to make sure that the text can handle it in terms of, um, you know, you wouldn't use really skinny text. You wouldn't be able to probably recognize what image is in them, but yeah, that'll do the trick. So for this one, I'm going to make a duplication of that text as well because I have something else to show you in a second. Turn that off. So the quick way, if the text is still technically editable text, like it reads as text, um, if you double click on it, you can change it, you know, that sort of a thing, then you're you're good for this one. You simply, again, make sure both are selected. This time I'll click out in the corner. Select both. Again, I can see they're both selected because this and this are both highlighted blue. And again, I go to make clipping mask. Now this time, as a different one, if you do a control click on a Mac, you can, um, you get these other options. And, or either that or a right click. I don't have a mouse. I'm using my trackpad so I have to do a right, uh, the right click equals a control click. And then you say make clipping mask and then you can see that it places the text in there so that you can see that that, depending on your photograph, it could be very effective. Um, and then lastly, the other way to do it is to come up here. Oh no, it isn't there. Okay, so it is just the um, up here under object and also um, with the right click or the control click. So those are the two ways to get the text to go inside. Now, if by some other chance though, if I am using text, however, if I need to make that into a, let me rephrase that here. Well, let's say that I wanna edit this text. And so I'd have to use the expand button. What I would need to do is uh, it's a little bit annoying, extra work of course, but let's, so let's say that I have to, oh, I don't mean to do that, I'm going to have to just lock some of this other stuff down so I don't accidentally, um, <laughs> I don't want to accidentally, okay, there we go. Um, so here, let's say I have to do something like that where I am editing, you know, the, the text, and so I had to change it and it's no longer editable text, instead it is a uh, shape. This part can get a bit annoying, but it is possible to get the same look here. What you could do is, of course, leave a couple of these editable and then make these ones uneditable in terms of being text. However, you can also 
make sure that you have, like, see, the one, two, three, four, five, six. So we would need six different photographs. So you could keep duplicating. You get the idea here. Okay. Won't even bother finishing, but you get it. And then um, these images, I'm just going to turn these guys off. Turn this back on. So that's where the, all the text is sitting, correct? So I'm going to move this guy down here just so he's closer. I'm also, though, going to select the whole grouping and move it over on top of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place each photograph inside uh, a, a distinct letter. So I'm going to need to ungroup the text and I can either do, you can either do what I'm doing, which is just to select it here, or I can select it here. It's either way, it's the same thing. Um, and then I'm going to ungroup it. And now I can get each of these letters individually. And then I can do, you know, again, you make sure that each of the ones that you want to change are selected. So I'm going to deselect off of there. Uh, another way to deselect, if you do have a bunch of things selected, is just to come up here and select and simply hit deselect. And that way I can choose appropriately. So here I'm going to select this one. I'm going to hit the shift key down select that one and then again do my right click or control click oh I picked the wrong one <laughs> okay don't want to group that I want to ungroup it I think I did a step back okay so if I get this one and this one it should be all I need yeah there you go so you would have to do that with each individual letter. So you can see it's kind of a pain, but it is a way to make sure that you can do a very complicated situation and have it still feel pretty simplistic. So on and on you would go. So the big key for that one is, of course, just making sure your image placement does not change uh, so that you get that continuous image uh, feel. All right, and the other part I was going to do here was to show you how to place a graphic into it's the same basic idea here so I'm going to unlock and I'm going to keep in where did I put that I'll just make another circle it's fine so if I want to place a different kind of shape inside of another one which you know I'm not sure exactly why you would do it but let's just go ahead and do it anyway change the color so we can see the effect taking place so for this one I'm going to change the position of the star so it would be the shape and so it needs to go above oh man it doesn't want to let go just want this guy and I'm going to, if something's being stubborn sometimes you just have to do it up here under the menu items under object and I'm going to bring it to the front there we go now I can go ahead and select these two and again um, make clipping mask and then your shape will be inside of your other shape so those are the basics